TV moments that should have never been aired. Talk programs that air late at night are a rich source of provocative conversations and witty exchanges. This is particularly the case when the program invites an innovative or controversial visitor to speak. This compilation of photographs serves as a reminder that these rule-breaking free firearms have contributed to some of the most entertaining moments in the history of television. Remember when Madonna made Johnny Carson blush because of her late-night flirting? On June 9, 1987, when Johnny Carson welcomed Madonna to The Tonight Show, he likely anticipated conducting a straightforward interview with the up-and-coming musical star. However, Madonna had other intentions. The seductive singer openly mingled with Carson until it became evident to the audience that the late-night presenter was completely enamored with the native of Bay City, Michigan. For the promotion of her Who's That Girl album, Madonna embarked on a world tour mere weeks after her debut appearance on The Tonight Show. The Like a Virgin vocalist filed for an annulment of her matrimonial union with actor Sean Penn later that same year. It was irreconcilable differences, not her flirtation with Johnny Carson, that led to their separation. Leading sex symbol Raquel Welch showed she was as fierce as she was sexy on The Dick Cavett Show in 1972. Dick Cavett had a reputation for being rather formal and reserved, yet he found Raquel Welch's seductive performance on his program to be quite enjoyable. While the iconic image of Welsh in the British film One Million Years B.C. donning a doe-skin bikini as a primitive woman is still well-remembered, Welsh was also renowned for portraying strong, seductive female characters. This stood in striking contrast to the majority of female roles during the 1960s and 1970s, which portrayed attractive women as sex goddesses or damsels in distress. Janis Joplin in full pearl mode on The Dick Cavett Show. Janis Joplin, a rock icon, appeared on The Dick Cavett Show on multiple occasions, including a few months before her untimely and tragic demise in 1970. Joplin, who went by the moniker Pearl, unveiled to the world a distinctive sonic composition that fused elements of rock, blues, and soul. Following her demise, a posthumous compilation of her recordings entitled Pearl was released. Fans were able to hear me and Bobby McGee, Crybaby, and Mercedes-Benz on this album. Johnny Carson seemed surprised when actress Adrian Barbeau used the phrase, My Multiple Lovers. On December 12, 1974, Adrian Barbeau appeared on The Tonight Show alongside Johnny Carson a few weeks before the holiday season. Carson inquired naturally about the exchange of Christmas presents with his co-star on the television series Maud. Barbeau acknowledged that she was consistently bestowed with peculiar gifts by her various partners, including a fire extinguisher, encyclopedias, and automotive repair supplies. Carson disregarded the peculiar gifts and instead inquired about the seductive brunette's multiple relationships, prefacing each inquiry with a subtle, it's none of my business, but... Barbeau, to her credit, exhibited comparable evasion and modesty by declining to identify specific individuals. Singer Donna Summer encouraged girls to be mechanics with Johnny Carson on November 28, 1979. Donna Summer's appearance on The Tonight Show provided the momentous occasion she required to truly realize her celebrity status. She stuttered during her appearance so as to not offend presenter Johnny Carson by relating how she used to watch his program as a young girl. Carson once alluded to the fact that Summers possesses a mechanical aptitude and could perform tasks such as repairing automobiles. Summers' uniqueness was the subject of Carson's prejudice remark that females are not mechanically inclined, thus rendering it unusual. Summers utilized that occasion to inspire other women to pursue unconventional trajectories. Twister with Zsa Zsa Gabor Zsa Zsa Gabor and Johnny Carson occupied a substantial portion of the May 3, 1966 episode of The Tonight Show engaged in board games. Indeed, Carson and Gabor are frequently acknowledged for rescuing the Milton Bradley game Twister. Despite the release of Twister earlier that year, sales were disappointing. However, when members of the public observed Carson and Gabor engaging in the coyly provocative game together, they began to demand Twister. Following The Tonight Show, Twister's sales surpassed 3 million units in the months that followed. 
Subsequently, the game entered the annals of American pop culture. Alison Brie's radiant presence and Seth Meyers' gracious hosting. Alice Brie appeared on The Late Show with Seth Meyers in a visually and metaphorically magnificent manner. Recognized for appearances on Community and Glow, the accomplished actress emanated sophistication while adorned in a stunning gray gown that flawlessly accentuated her good taste and elegance. Her poise and sophistication captured the attention of the audience. Additionally praiseworthy were Seth Meyers' professionalism and regard. Myers astutely maintained the conversation's focus, avoiding any remarks that could potentially cause Bree distress in an industry where commentary on appearance can frequently wander into unsettling territory. By adopting this considerate methodology, Myers not only accentuated her hosting expertise, but also established a constructive atmosphere that underscored the value of honoring talent rather than surface-level qualities, even within the opulent realm of late-night television. Doris Day joined Johnny Carson in 1974 to talk about her TV sitcom. One of the enduring contributions of actress and vocalist Doris Day was her pivotal role in popularizing the bedroom comedy film genre. She appeared in films with David Niven, Cary Grant, Rock Hudson, James Garner, Clark Gable, and Rod Taylor, among other prominent males of the time. From 1968 to 1973, she even hosted her sitcom on television titled The Doris Day Show. Before achieving success as an actress, Day had a series of number one singles in the charts during the 50s and 60s. Joan Rivers admires Elvira's cleavage on The Tonight Show. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, was complimented on her cleavage by Joan Rivers. During Joan Rivers' late-night talk show, the horror personality, Elvira, portrayed by actress Cassandra Peterson, the presenter engaged in a lengthy discussion regarding Elvira's breasts. Despite her gender, Rivers perpetuated the erotic insinuations that had been established by Johnny Carson before her appearance. The appearance on Halloween night occurred in 1985. Peterson made a career out of portraying the original goth girl, a seductive Morticia vampire who appeared throughout the 1980s in television programs, films, comic books, and live performances. Anne Margaret tells Johnny Carson about leaving behind sex kitten roles. Johnny Carson spoke with actress Anne Margaret regarding her experience of being typecast as a sex vixen rather than being recognized as a serious actress. In the same week that she was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her performance as Jack Nicholson's excessively affectionate fiancé in the film Carnal Knowledge, she made an appearance on The Tonight Show with Carson on February 29, 1972. The Swedish-born actress had previously appeared in B-films as a sex vixen. However, this film enables the audience to recognize her true acting prowess. Susan Anton got her big break singing in a cigar commercial. It's peculiar to consider that Susan Anton's breakthrough performance was in a cigar advertisement. The protracted prohibition on cigarette and cigar advertising has led to a tendency to overlook their existence. However, it was the tall, slender blonde with ideal American good features who captured the interest of directors following her appearance in the Muriel cigar advertisements. She subsequently appeared in numerous films and on television and was a favorite on talk shows. More than 30 times she appeared on The Merv Griffith Show, where she was interviewed by numerous presenters, including substitute host David Brenner. Carol Wayne was a regular on The Tonight Show as the ditzy matinee lady. Carol Wayne, a voluptuous blonde, appeared frequently on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson as the matinee lady. Indeed, she appeared in over a hundred episodes in the role of the renowned sly character in comedic routines that made sexual insinuations. Nonetheless, Wayne's recurring appearance on The Tonight Show was reduced from 90 to 60 minutes. Wayne's dismissal from the talk show commenced a precipitous decline. Reportedly, she was forced to work as an escort due to her severe financial difficulties and drug and alcohol addiction. Jay Leno and Whitney Houston share a late-night laugh. Before her appearance on Jay Leno's late-night talk show, Whitney Houston had surpassed the Beatles as the artist with the most number one singles. Leno wished the R&B singer well on her achievement and inquired about her recent acquisition of a very large house in New York. 
Houston captivated both the live and television audiences with renditions of I'm Your Baby Tonight and A Christmas Carol. Carol Wayne was often the butt of Carson's sexual jokes. Although Carson primarily intended to provoke with his use of middle school humor, sexual innuendo, and double meanings, Wayne and Carson's routines were amusing nonetheless. Wayne, who appeared both seductive and naive, was the constant target of his quips and insults directed with malicious intent. Although Carson's explicit comedic style garnered support from late-night viewers during the 70s, several of his remarks would be interpreted differently in the light of the current Me Too movement. 